There you are. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this, your Virgo March 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant. I've done a number of readings for Virgos over the course of the last month, and if you might be interested in having a one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant reading with me from anywhere in the world, just check out the information that is in the description box below. Now, I do charge for clairvoyant readings. I have to. But what I do not charge for, and, and I'm going to make an announcement now. Look, when I was born, or prior to it, I was provided with the gifts of clairvoyance and healing, amongst a couple of other things. And in my own country, and in different parts of the world that I've been in over, over the years, I have conducted healing successfully for people. And, and I do it for free. What I am offering to you or to someone that you might know is that if you want to contact me to have a healing, it takes about 15 minutes or less. It's got to be over FaceTime or Skype because I need to see the individual and, and I will conduct the healing while talking to the person. Now, there are some countries, and I don't know where this video ends up, where I need to state, and I do state, that you should also seek professional medical advice and attention in conjunction with the healing that I provide. So I just say that, and I don't keep any records of who I've spoken to or what was the healing involved, so there's no worry about privacy. Uh, it's not even in my head, because as people who've had clairvoyant readings from me know, I forget everything. Very often I don't know what it is I'm saying during the reading, and I definitely forget everything after the reading. That helps me to stay sane, but it's also, it's also a good encryption device, don't you think? Because nobody can ever find out anything from me about you or anybody else. Now, as the subscribers know, and great to see you, there are no video advertisements here during this content, so you get to enjoy the experience direct. By the way, after this reading, I'm going out on a date tonight. Yes, with a beautiful lady, an accountant. So <laughs> it, it, it will be interesting to, to, uh, to see how we get on. Look, the thing is this, is that she's a beautiful woman and, be well, all women are beautiful, really, aren't they? And, and, and a beautiful woman is like a kryptonite, kryptonite to me. I, 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 I have no defense. So uh, we shall see what the night unfolds. Go to a nice restaurant with a view out over the water, have some very good wine, some great food, some good conversation, a few laughs, and we will all leave it at that. Now, what I'll do now is I'll draw five cards for you, shall I? And uh, we'll see what's in store for you, because five is all we need, because they speak volumes to us. There's the three of swords, gorgeous looking card, that I must say. There's temperance, beautiful three of swords, ten of wands, exquisite uh, picture of that, prince of cups. Will I take one from the top or the bottom? What do you think? What do I take it from? I'll take it from the top. See what's there. The six of pentacles. I think that might be good. It depends how they go with other things that are here. So why don't you, as is our usual practice, I'll ask you to come down here and sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do the reading for you. All right, let's do this. Now, we're going to look at the Prince, then at Temperance, and there's a very instructive diagonal here, which is taking you from sorrow through the process into success. So let's look to see. Now, they're all connected, of course, but let's have a look at the Prince of Cups first, shall we? And here, who do we have? Well, it is Eros, 
the Greek god of passionate and romantic love. Now, there are two versions of Eros in the Greek myths, as I recall, one older and associated with the, the growth forces of nature, and one younger and associated with love, and that is certainly the one that I prefer. That they share similar origins and are often seen as the same god in different forms, though, is just a fact. Now, many l later people after the myths came around referred to Eros as love itself, although he was also given the power of instigating love in gods and in mortals. Now, despite this, Eros was also praying to his own expertise. He fell in love with a young woman, and he also fell in love with Psyche. Now, the Greek word eros was a common noun for sexual desire. But as eros was given to romantic love, the two concepts were seen as accompanying one another. Now, I think that what I draw is that this image is telling me, obviously, that this is a time of passion and romantic love for you. Now, that uh, love is just something that's around. There will be sexual desire within you at this period, so make use of it, whether with someone else or in your own fantasy life, that's okay. But there's, it's inescapable that this is a time of great passion for you. I also think that at this time you will be sensitive, emotional, and highly intuitive. There is a dreaminess around here and an exquisite imagination that comes from the realms of the unconscious. Now, this, uh, this is also connected to the psychic realm, you know, of premonition and intuition. And so you should explore dreams seeking truth in the hidden levels of your subconscious and bringing your intuitive gifts to the surface. I think that what this is saying is that this is a time for you to learn the range of your emotions, managing and understanding your moods. You will look deep within your heart. You will understand that opening the heart without fear brings healing and strength. And I think here also is the soul self remembering its connection to the divine, healing its karma on earth. You will have a sense of wanting to do things for other people at this time. Now, when this energy arrives, success and good news are coming. It may well be social invitations, I think. This prince symbolizes new beginnings and the start of creative projects and ideas for you. Messages in dreams, heightened intuition, and possibly also psychic abilities may well unfold. He signals a time to trust your gut feeling. He encourages you to study spiritual subjects, a heightened awareness of compassion and understanding for yourself and for other people opens up for you at this time. You may find that you are quite quiet, gentle, that your soul stirs the emotional waters of inner self, bringing feelings to the surface and balancing them with the earth energy. Surfacing emotions can make you feel vulnerable and fearful, but he reminds you that sensitivity is a gift, not a curse, and he encourages you to trust your feelings and not to be swayed by others. Be true to your own heart. Now, I also think that Scorpio sun or rising and Libra, Sun, or Rising are going to be important to you. And when we come to this card, I think that Sagittarius is going to be important to you at this time. Quite an interesting array of people, don't you think? Now, let me see here what we have in this painting. Well, it, it portrays the mysteries. This card is Temperance, number 14. It, it portrays the mysteries of temperance as the art of alchemy, though it bears 
uh, ordinary mysteries also here is the art of blending different aspects of something to create something better of manipulating the resources you have in a process of creation of tempering your activities to ensure that through moderation you are productive now the name of this card actually doesn't for me really properly convey the depth of mystery that it holds. Now, conjuring up images of quiet virtue and almost timidity, the title seems to ignore the mystical transformation of the soul that is taking place with you. The process by which the base matter of the self can be changed into spiritual gold. gold. However, Temperance is the virtue most apt for the art form of the alchemical process, I suppose. Now, this process separates the perfect spirit from the unrefined base earth, the subtle from the dense, gently and with unremitting care. This is a gentle art performed with prudence and temperance. Now, as I mentioned, the number of temperance is 14, and that is the number of mental foundation, imagination, and will. It is the number of the awakened spiritual self integrated into the material world. The visionary, the alchemist who understands how the energies of nature, spirit, and humanity work together. Now, temperance helps melt away conflict, and this is something which you're going to be looking at. But this temperance card here, Major Arcana, is going to melt away conflict in your life. And in this process, you will begin to integrate the energies, bringing rebirth of yourself in this process. You begin to integrate the spiritual and material worlds of the con conscious and the subconscious self. Now, temperance combines and blends the mystical masculine and the mystical feminine energies to bring healing and promise. The process of creation moves stagnation and it ignites the life force and imagination within you, you begin to explore and expand your inherent individual talents out into the world. Now, as a schoolboy, I was forced to do Latin from the age of 10, so eight years of Latin. And temperance is the Latin word for to mix. Now, temperance's job is to flow the creative energies of opposites back and forth, alchemically balancing, combining, and recombining components of life and spirit until they mix into the ideal mixture or solution that creates harmony, balance, and beauty for you. Now, as temperance flows with the inner balance of the cosmos, it guides you to blend and temper the energies of your inner and outer worlds, to expand and embrace a higher purpose. Temperance is healing, inspiring, magical, and transformative. It brings balance, creativity and energy to any project, relationship or endeavor that you will be pursuing. Temperance's calming energies can bring harmony and peace to anything that is not in harmony. Practice the art of temperance with your emotions, attitudes and beliefs. The quiet Meditative energy here slowly ignites the powerful life force within you to birth magnificent creations. The energy of temperance is alive, magnetic and beautiful, inspiring you to become the alchemist of your life. Now, I said we were going to work through also this diagonal that's here, and let's look at, look at this Lovely, lovely painting 
Goodness me, have a look at that. Isn't that a beautiful image? Well, the it's a beautiful image, but nevertheless, it is one that is kind of stark and bleak. The three swords in the image are stained with the blood to represent the hurt and pain associated with this energy. You might be feeling down in the dumps about something, I think, or about something that someone has done. Maybe things from the past. Because there is a, a pain associated with this energy. And around them, around these swords, is an icy, snowy landscape, indicative of the feelings of being frozen and unable to move that often... Those feelings that often accompany grief and suffering. Now at its worst, the Three of Swords answers the question, what am I to do? How will I go on? And it answers it with a resounding, there is nothing you can do, just nothing. But with you, with this Temperance card and with this Prince of Cups around it, that's not the case. This is not something major. I think it's something sitting under the surface, to tell you the truth. Something that you haven't dealt with. Something that you haven't worked through. Yet, behind the clouds, you will see, a little sunshine can be seen, and the blood from the swords falls onto white roses, symbolic of innocence being hurt, yet remaining intact. Nothing will go untouched by sorrow in this life, you understand, but nothing is destroyed by it either. Now, if I can just consider the astrology of the card here, it is that of Saturn in the second decan of Libra. Now, Saturn is exalted in Libra, so you should expect really good things. But with the number three here, I also have an association with the planet of Saturn as well. So there is a double Saturn, and Saturn in many respects is about limits, restrictions, time, form, and formality. And the suit of swords, of course, is the, is the product of the suits of wands and cups. So it can be turbulent at times. So there may well be that there are some worries, doubts, lack of clarity, a heaviness, a depression around here. Maybe tension in a three-sided relationship. Now, there is no doubt that the Three of Swords energy can bring experiences of heartbreak, disappointment, despair or grief. Painful memories that are being held in the mind and the heart need to be looked at, accepted, processed, and let go so you can heal. Now, this three encourages you to empty the sadness of your heart. The pain of losing something special is an individual experience that each person processes differently. Well, we know that, don't we? You've seen that. And there are stages of grieving, denial, anger, guilt, vulnerability, loneliness and depression, which can come through as a result of a, of a loss in various stages or various strengths. But the ultimate goal is to take back your personal power and gain the strength back to begin to live your life at a renewed level. Understanding and wisdom are coming to you. And as one door closes, another door opens. Now, the silver lining here is that this cleanses your mind and heart from the heaviness of life's pains. It brings truth and clarity to situations, relationships or issues that have been in denial. It changes the focus off old emotional wounds, okay, and defeating thoughts to the present. Now, cleansing is not an easy process. But the rewards are many. Cleansing gives you a sense of lightness and strength. The cleanse of the Three of Swords detoxes and rejuvenates your spirit so a new identity and perspective can emerge. Now, this can indicate a romantic relationship in trouble or a friendship or a partnership that's in trouble. 
You may discover a disappointing and painful truth about someone or something. It indicates an issue involving three people or three situations that is causing distress. It can signal a betrayal and being let down, as well as sudden and unexpected changes and loss. You get the picture. So brace yourself for a few tears. There's nothing wrong with tears. All I would say is that if you are going to weep, then weep all of your tears. Tears are a form of cleansing. And when you have cried your last tear, you begin the process of healing. But this three brings you the strength and courage to process pain and suffering. Moving it out of the heart and mind, the Three of Swords reminds you that this too shall pass. And remember that the tears you shed, they water the gardens of your heart. Now very often some things come around by, as a result of things that people from the past or people who are close to us say, look, and the answer is this, is that sometimes you just have to believe in yourself. Now there is a good chance that all you've ever been told or made to feel in your life so far is that you can't do anything. That every time you even dared to dream that your life could be better, you were shot down or laughed at, made to feel small, made to feel useless, made to feel like an idiot for even thinking you could be more. Now all of us, just as we thought something was in reach, have had a massive shadow of doubt thrown upon us, and normally by somebody close to us. And it hurts, doesn't it? And then you've thought of the pain to get what you want, and your brain avoids it. But I will say this, that the acceptance of your pain is in reality the acceptance of your creator's perfection. One of our biggest mistakes is to ignore what happens within us. There is no shame in letting your creator know that you are falling and that you need him to pick you up. The fall of the ego becomes the rise of the soul. Your soul wants to meet you. It wants to breathe. It wants to speak. It wants to see with the clarity of the eyes of your heart. These eyes of the heart are the eyes bestowed directly upon you by your creator to witness him and his pleasure. And the friends of the divine are not in search of their own eyes, they are in search of his eyes. Now let's quickly deal with this Ten of Wands and let's have a look at the art on it and see what does it tell us? What is here? Well, it's an ancient Egyptian thing by the looks of it because we, we can see a man dragging the capstone of a pyramid up to its final resting place. Now it is important that it is the capstone that he has taken on as his burden, for this is the final piece, the last piece of the pyramid to be put into play. His work uh, put in, into place. Now his, his work is almost done. The sun sets overhead and the torches around him have been lit. Even as the light fades, his will still burns strongly, urging him onwards. He screams in agony and expended effort as his muscles strain against the ropes of his burden. It is clear that this task is taking every ounce of strength that he has, every piece of will and self and he wears the simple loincloth inspired by images from ancient Egypt of builders at work. Now you may understand what I'm saying when I describe it like that. You see, when this 10 has come here, as it has done, it is telling me, and in connection with this thought, with this uh, Three of Swords, that perhaps you are feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and challenged with the burdens of life. Now, the heavy weight of responsibilities, endless tasks and commitments bring the realization that you may be taken on more than you can handle. 
And as you struggle to advance, you feel like you are taking one step forward and two step back. Feeling overextended, your energy is being depleted as the demands of life await your attention. I think this 10 indicates a sort of a state of what I would call oppression, challenging you to get out of your present, to move past your present situation. Now, the key to this energy is recognizing oppressive and non-productive habits and patterns, shifting them and transforming them into new insights and empowerment. The gift of this energy is breaking karmic blocks, reclaiming and balancing your life force, expanding it into the world of action. And I suppose that the lesson of this 10 is to recognize and address your outgrown karmic patterns. Now, it can bring the heavy burdens of life, but it can also bring the opportunity to connect with your soul self, finding your true path to freedom and liberation. You are the driver of your physical vehicle. What happens to you on this earth plane is always unpredictable. But if you keep your center, your heart, mind, and spirit in alignment and balanced with your daily activities, you are going to navigate through any challenge successfully. You truly are. So listen to your call. Now, the suit of one's fiery masculine energy needs to be contained and balanced to express itself in a productive fashion. And the number 10 represents completion and new beginnings. And the Ten of Wands mission is to stop the sabotaging and defeating patterns, to transform your shadow aspect and to burn and the dramas away and empower you to the next stage of growth. Now let's quickly look at this final card here, which is the culmination of your efforts and it results in success in all areas of your life. Now, the image here shows a Buddhist monk wearing the orange robes of Cambodian Buddhism, seated in meditation at the feet of a statue of the Buddha. The statue holds its right hand in the gift-giving mudra. The monk holds his lap, his, in his lap, his, his begging bowl, which he receives gifts of food. Now, in the foreground, an exchange takes place. A lay person of the community offers rice to the... Uh, to the begging bowl of, a, of another pair of outstretched hands. Another form of offering is also made in this card. Incense burns in the temple in which the scene takes place, which is a traditional offering in many Eastern and Indian religions. Now, what is interesting, I think, from the point of view of this card and energy for you is that it is the moon ruling the second decan of Taurus. Well, the moon is exalted in Taurus, which is a great sign, but the moon has a transient nature. Uh, and um, But it does talk about material success here for you because the moon likes nurturing and comfort. And Taurus, that fixed sign of Earth, loves material things. So they are well suited to bringing about material success. So there is external manifestation of inner thoughts here. There is success and transformation. I think that you should be open to your success. It is no less than a gift you can learn to accept humbly and thankfully. Real success only comes once you have learned to serve and success under these conditions enriches all levels of your being. Now, what does success mean for you at the moment? Visualize it as precisely as possible what your success looks like. Visualize it and have it in mind before you go to sleep at night and say this to yourself. My self-acceptance and self-confidence, they are the keys to real success. Well, what a fantastic spread of cards for you. Good job, you. Well, I think uh, I look. I really enjoyed doing that reading for you. Honestly, I did. I thought the artwork was pretty interesting, didn't you? I thought so. I, I work very. This deck, uh, for some reason, really seems to speak to me. 
And I hope that you enjoyed the reading as much as I enjoyed providing it to you. You're a very special person and I love doing readings for you. Now, there's one thing I want you to remember until I see you next time and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. So until then, it's bye for now.